So at this point, I would like to invite Ambassador Brahimi to provide the keynote address to our audience. Over to you, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you very much indeed, Ambassador, and I'm extremely grateful to USIP uh, and the uh, uh, Kakar Foundation and uh, the Heart of Asia uh, Foundation for inviting me to be with you today. I, I very much regret that I've accepted to give you the, uh, uh, the uh, keynote speech. My remarks will not be a keynote speech because I really don't know what to say. Um, I have been away from Afghanistan and uh, Afghanistan's problems and discussions and debates and so on since January uh, 2004. I went back once to Kabul for a couple of nights uh, in 2010. That's all. I keep in touch with a few uh, people and uh, try to listen and understand. But that's not enough to deliver to you a keynote speech. So please consider it as a few remarks of, uh, of an interested uh, old man, uh, you know, following what you are all doing and with a great deal of uh, respect and admiration. Um, First, you know, about the book, I'm really, you know, full of admiration and respect uh, to uh, Kaun and all the people who have uh, helped him uh, make this book become a reality. Here you have, you know, a wealth of experience, which is not only for, you know, people are sitting around this virtual table, but perhaps most for the people who are trying to negotiate now, peace at last for Afghanistan. They will not find the recipe uh, to make a success of their negotiations, but they will find, uh, you know, if they are wise enough, they will find a lot of lessons uh, of uh, success and probably more of failures for them to uh, you know, look back and see how they can do better than all the people who preceded them over the last 40 years. By the way, it's not 40 years, it's 50 years that Afghanistan has been in trouble. At least uh, 1973, the uh, country was destabilized when uh, Dawood, Sardar Dawood went for his uh, coup d'etat against his cousin. Uh, it's from there to this day that Afghanistan has continued to be destabilized. It, it, it has not been easy and it will not be easy to uh, uh, make things right. Uh, so this is, this is uh, you know, this is uh, something that they will, they will, they will find they will find in, in, in the book if they care to uh, to look at, you know, just pick up almost any uh, contribution and you will, you will, you will learn uh, much, much from it. Um, uh, the, the, the second point I would like to make is, uh, those who are uh, negotiating uh, today should remember that uh, you know, no matter how strong you think you are, especially in Afghanistan, no matter how many battles you win, the others will come back at you. And nobody should know that better than the Taliban. In 2001, uh, they controlled 95% of the country. All their adversaries were physically out of Afghanistan. 
except for Ahmed Shah Massoud, who was at a very little corner of, uh, of uh, Northwest uh, Afghanistan. And where are they today? Or where were they uh, uh, in, uh, in October 2001? And where were the Taliban in 2001? Defeated, scattered, uh, all over the country and all over the region. So if they think that they are going to win today, uh, maybe, maybe they have the capability also. But, uh, you know, that will not be achieving peace. It will be achieving victory for a time. This is not what Afghanistan needs. This is not what the Taliban or anybody sitting around that table in Doha needs. What they need is peace. And peace is, is a complicated business, difficult to achieve. Uh, it needs time. You know, if, if they think that the fact that the Americans will leave in July uh, is the end of the story, they, they are absolutely wrong. Uh, anybody who thinks that is absolutely wrong. Maybe the Americans will go and will not come back. But in, in our world today, uh, nobody lives in an island and definitely not Afghanistan. They have neighbors, those neighbors have interests, uh, they have likes, they have dislikes, uh, and they have friends in, inside, in, in, inside Afghanistan. So, you know, how can this message be conveyed to the people who take decisions in, uh, in Afghanistan? The Taliban, the government, the other parties, you know, there is something that is uh, not very good for Afghanistan. The same people have been at it for now uh, at least 30 years. But what is good is that they have accumulated experience. If every individual that is involved today in, in, in the decision making in places where it matters have been around for 20 years at least, 30 years, 40 years. Uh, so they, they should know. Uh, and they should be reminded of uh, what it is about. When we were fighting against the French in the uh, 1950s and early 1960s, when at long last the French accepted the idea of negotiating with us, they offered us a ceasefire. They said, let's have a ceasefire and uh, you know, negotiate. That it's better for everybody to negotiate while the ceasefire was on. But we were much too weak to accept the ceasefire. So we insisted that we should, uh, you know, we should continue to fight while the negotiation is taking place. And at the end, it worked for us. Um, there is the temptation to say the same thing today is fully understandable and, and nobody will understand it better than me. Uh, but perhaps it's not what Afghanistan is needed. Uh, needs. Uh, now it is practically uh, understood and accepted that uh, Peace is for the Afghans uh, to make, not, not for others. Yeah, maybe, you know, there'll be a hanging around, there'll be, with a lot of influence also in some cases, uh, but still it's the Afghans who are going to make peace. Negotiations between them, I think it's great if negotiations take a long time, not a short time. But for that to happen, it will be so much better and so much easier if uh, they have a solid provisional uh, ceasefire. These are, you know, these are some of the of the points I wanted to to make at, at the beginning. I may I may come back, you know, if you ask me questions or if I also think of uh, something else uh, to say. The bottom line is 
uh, you know, uh, I think the Afghans can can uh, complain that uh, promises have been made to them that have not been kept. Uh, that the Americans are, you know, giving up without uh, without really without really discussing this properly with their Afghan partners. Uh, but this was is bound to happen one day. You know, uh, you know. I, I kept repeating to the Iraqis when I was there for those six months in 2004 that you know the Americans, whatever you think of what they have done, uh, uh, and I happen to think that what they did was really uh, not acceptable. But they will live one day, and most probably sooner than later. So, uh, you know, it, it happens that I don't know why they went to Iraq in the first place, but they did go to Iraq. They have done all the harm they could. Maybe they did uh, some good also. Maybe they didn't. But one day they will, they will, they will go away. Peace has to be made between you Iraqis. 95% uh, of the Iraqis wanted to get rid of uh, Saddam Hussein. Americans got rid of him for you. That didn't come without a price, but it happened. Now it's up to you to, to, to create a country that is better. Than so, in, I mean, the Afghans have, are in, in a similar situation, although the background is totally different. Uh, in July, the Americans will most probably uh, have no military uh, role anymore. But it's up to you now, all of you. Uh, you know, the government, the other parties, uh, younger generation like uh, uh, Kaun and, uh, and, uh, and, and Janan and the others who are around this table, it's up to you now to, uh, to uh, at long last, put an end to these 50 years of instability and wars in your country. Thank you.